Hi. So every time I share the stage with Madhav, <laughs> I'm giving 10 minutes, and that's and I always run out of time. So I will try and rush through this. Um, uh, uh, do we have questions after this, or is it just like speak and get the hell out? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, like he said, context is everything, and I believe it's. Um, you know, it starts with what we have been, what we want to be, and that's how it comes together to make what we become at the end of, uh, you know, our lives or at the end of a discourse. Um, so I'll start out with my architectural influences, and we all missed Wolf Shipley here, but this is what actually started me out in '98. It was second year architecture school when I saw this project, and you know, my first love was actually progressive rock music, and that's what I was doing. But when I saw this project, I, you know. I suddenly realized that architecture could be a lot more than just, you know, uh, an orthogonal grid and uh, concrete and brick masonry with plaster rendering on it. And then I started studying further. I found projects like the Sanjay Pompidou, uh, you know, the Arabic Institute, and um, uh, the Infobox by Schumacher. This incidentally happened to have been done by the contractors we had engaged for our Hanover Pavilion. Then I traveled. I saw. London as a city, and uh, you know, I started. I I felt that our cities are actually missing something. I started looking through, and I think every weekend I'd actually go and walk the square mile to see, you know, the Lloyd's headquarters. And uh, you know, at that time there was the Natas building, and they were still building the Shard. So we actually just go to these sites and see what was going on, and started referencing technique and tectonics, and. In my own mind, I derived this that you know we can't possibly go back in time. I think we need to start moving forward, and move for. And that doesn't mean it's not well crafted. So you can actually move from what is a patient, what used to be a patient, slow crafted process, to something that's you know a lot more high tech, faster moving, you know ma manufacturing driven. Uh, because the more you compress your cost, your time and cost of construction, and expand your time of use. This was part of an architectural dissertation I did. Uh, the more relevant your projects actually may become, and then of course you have to start engaging with sustainability and whatnot, uh, and eventually start making, but I mean move beyond that and make projects that are a little more interesting than actually do encompass the spirit of place, and do embody uh, people, and that's where context really comes in, or spatial context really comes in. Uh, so the first project I'll talk about today is a project we finished in 2012. It's to announce the birth of a new city. It's um, so. Let's say that this was a project, uh, well, about 20 kilometers from Bangalore Airport, away from Bangalore, uh, to in a greenfield situation. So, with the ring road going through it, um, so really to announce the presence of well, a new 250 acre development. In our minds, we say, okay, this is to create meaning in. Uh, In a space that has none at that moment, so we made what is called the Discovery Center. This project is well widely published and discussed. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on the project. I'll, I'm actually just going to breeze through it and then breeze through the second project and then start comparing both of them or leave you guys to compare them. The building was uh, essentially about the air, the quality of light. Uh, And the spirit of, you know, just just the just the geographic spirit of Bangalore as such. Um, so we created like multi-layered skins everywhere. Uh, made a system that actually allows the building to be ventilated with 100% fresh air, which is partly geothermal, partly thermal storage. Uh, and we chanced upon a fairly energy-efficient system. Also, started modulating these louvers and sunbreakers and uh, fridge-printed glass to get. Slightly more interesting devices. Started expressing a different construction system because the building had to be, well, it had a limited time period, so it had to be modular. It um, it was going to be moved. We were told after six years. Well, it's it's now the fourth year, but they tell me they're they're going to keep it in that place for eight years and reuse it. Um, that's the way real estate is. So these are some images of the mocks we did and some studies we did. So the building was actually. Uh, The fundamental principle was a, you know, a sale. We were approached as a sales gallery, but we said let's make it, let's call it a town hall and not a sales gallery per se, and let this space be a space to, 
to introduce a new kind of architecture to the city of Bangalore. Um, and so the building became extremely verbose and very, very apparent in its construction technique and uh, its expression. It sits on a plinth, the plinth's made with, uh, and it, the plinth actually is not, was actually naturally formed at site. And whatever little fill we had to do, we, we did from uh, the surrounding excavations of, uh, you know, uh, quarry rubbish, because there are quite a few quarries there. And of course, we were going to be excavating around at sites. So the building sat naturally on top at a strategic location at sites. So you could look around and see the development as it was. And we placed a egg, egg right in front. It's a fiberglass egg made at site, in, and no two curves are really the same. Uh, uh, the idea for the red was that you can see it from a distance. So it's A, to signify the germination of a new city, B, a color that can be seen from the distance, and uh, C, three layers, well, two layers of fake printed glass and a third layer of uh, perforated fabric. So the entire building would, would sort of play a little dance when the sun would move around it. And you'd see it differently from the outside and the inside. And that's essentially an interference pattern called a moray. So just a few glimpses of what the building is inside. It's about nine meters tall and about 105 meters long. We started disassociating things, we started layering everything. So we've layered the landscape, so every particular, every species of flora or fauna, oh sorry, flora has, uh, has a distinct layer and we started doing that to the architecture as well. It actually started with the architecture and then went out to, do, to the landscape. So you start sort of distinguishing various elements and start expressing it. The idea in our minds was for the building to actually form a narrative. So when a user would walk in, it wouldn't just be a building that is energy efficient that people have to talk about. It would be a building that as any ordinary person would walk in would actually start questioning elements. So including column junctions were deliberately expressed, exaggerated um, in a certain manner. And this, for whatever this building is on a, well, it's nine meters tall with a 17 or 18 meter span, the column sizes are just about 150 mm. So we started lacing columns in a certain way. Again, reducing material consumption for this particular size a project. Just a few views of what happens inside. Um, and started expressing, experiencing, uh, expressing structure. Uh, we realized that we've come across a nice building or we made a nice building and we were getting lots of praises for it but we said okay nice building so what? You know, No one really knows about it. Um, so we extended our scope or our, our discourse into you know start talking about the city as such. That's what the building was doing. Started so sending out messages through you know cartographs and infographics and then, you know, an ice cream van. So an ice cream van that would actually go out and serve free ice cream to everyone in, this, in the actual heart of Bangalore and hand out leaflets and pamphlets. So, you know, you'd extend the program a bit. Um, essentially because the idea for this project was, you know, place making as, you know, at its very fundamentals. Uh, the space wasn't, uh, we managed to extend the program to not just it being a sales center, but actually a place for uh, talks such as, well, this particular image is the Edinburgh Science Festival for concerts. So, you know, the, you can actually stand on top and the plinth overlooks it. Uh, it was actually inaugurated by a concert, uh, by a concert with uh, Carlos Santana. Um, but like I said, we were still left with, you know, how many people actually do experience, you know, a new 250 acre development in Bangalore. Um, you still, I mean, you've done whatever you have to to get there, but what else? Oh, we've done quite a few projects since then. Well, the current one we're working on is one in Jodhpur, which is an urban regeneration project. Uh, so in comparison, this is a project that recreates or redefines meaning for, you know, an old city. Uh, we felt that there, there are a lot of um, redundant structures that are left around, all around us. Can we rehabilitate them? Can we reuse them? Can we express the technology again in, uh, and, and, and express its relevance in today's day and age? So the JDH project um, is to restore the walled city of Jodhpur, starting from the grain market all the way till the fort, and then extend the scope beyond it um, by including industry leaders and uh, enterprise leaders to actually contribute. So start out as always with contextual studies and whatnot. And we narrowed down on, well, we chanced upon, were also invited to do various levels, of, uh, you know, a step well, which is called the Tour Ji Bali, and that's the state it was in before we started. Three months and a few lakhs and not too much money later, 
the step well was kind of sandblasted, dewatered, desilted, and it suddenly starts opening out and becomes a space again. So it kind of becomes a node now um, and reorients the meaning of this particular setting as you know a core a core point within the development of the wall city. Um, I think the day we finished that, the water turned blue instead of being that muck. And you know, you see this image here where kids jumping in. Uh, and this is, unfortunately, I just have an image of you know, these few, but that's how popular it became. So people started tweeting about it, it became a social spectacle. Um, and it crossed, it became, it, it, it became a project across, um, well, economic spectra, so to speak. Um, so you'd have tourists sitting here, you'd find them hanging around here till late at night. Uh, you'd find them jumping into the water, then you'd find local kids jumping into the water. And suddenly the, you know, this becomes a primary charge as opposed to it being the Mehrangarh fort or the, the grain market. So just a few studies of what it is. It doesn't stop there. We're actually now uh, adding some street furniture, changing the streetscape, uh, uh, you, know, you know, introducing a new material that, you know, glass into the entire thing as a railing or as a, as a protection barrier because it is still slightly dangerous um, and strategically picking buildings and projects and introducing functions into them. So this one is what we call the Stepwell Cafe um, that allowed us to start like a new municipal signage, so to speak, in, in Jodhpur, reintroduce brass and gold as colors and material textures from the material history of Jodhpur, so to speak. And, um, you know, maybe doing something slightly provo provocative like this which, um, you know, Amrish has done a very nice project, or Lotus has done a very nice project right opposite this called the Ras, and you, can, you could see this right out from, the, from a new suite, and uh, it, was <laughs> it was, so well, yeah, that's it, and that's, so the Stepwell Cafe, so is a cafe, yes, um, it's the only place you can really go and eat an inexpensive meal in this, hygienic meal in this area, but, um, the idea is for it to be a space for disseminating information about the JDH project. Uh, and well, again, it becomes like a social media event. And I, I feel that, you know, much that we were against it, I, I realized that it's a good thing, because you can actually start, you know, if you, if you start using it and if you do something that, uh, that's interesting enough for, for people that are not connected to the world of design or architecture to start talking about, it, you know, you actually do extend the reach of your project. So the other things we've done is we've actually started picking up uh, with our client lots of projects uh, strategically through uh, through the wall city, and then redeveloping them or you know going, taking them back to what their historical state used to be, and then adding another layer. A lot of that is um, via cartographs, infographics, because one of the one of the clients happens to be um, well an ad agency. Um, and well, relight the structures, introduce new functions, actually go reaching out to people and say, okay, can, can we get you introduce a contrast and expression so that, you know, you do start, you do, again, you start layering modern and traditional techniques so that there's a dialogue between the two and uh, start recreating this. So these are just images through. Some to actually show that the, the project is still under development. So. Uh, you know, one of the ugliest buildings on the square was actually just scaffolded up in front with some signage, um, and that becomes an expression in itself. Uh, and then we start narrative through the project. Of course, again, you extend yourself, you start doing graphics, you start picking up materials, um, icons from uh, the contextual history of Jodhpur and start projecting those, and uh, reinterpreting those so that they finally acquire new meaning. So another thing that we're doing is actually programming this project with a polo ground and a flying club. So on the whole, the city has more depth and more uh, attraction. Well, that's really it.